Hi everyone, Greg Wilkins back here with you with another edition of The Daily Pause, a devotional of positivity and encouragement for the last Friday of April, April 29th, 2022. As always, I pray that you not only have a very blessed day today, but that today's devotional will help encourage, inspire, motivate you, and put a smile on your face. Make sure to like us and follow us on my Facebook page, The Daily Pause, on my YouTube channel, Greg Wilkins, and on my Twitter page, at Greg Wilkins 78, where you can leave your comments, devotional topic requests that you would like to see covered, any birthday or anniversary shout outs for your friends and loved ones, any audio or vi- video performances that you would like to submit to be a featured part of the Daily Pause devotional, and catch up on any episodes that you might have missed. I hope that every devotional that you watch will always be an encouragement and inspiration and a motivation for you to be the best that you can be throughout your day and put a smile on your face and put that bright pep in your step on today. Let's continue with our very interesting theme week of, hmm, that music sounds familiar, with today's devotional entitled, The Only Reason. Alan Jensen is the CEO, founder, and president of an international business that has 13 regional locations in the United States and 46 other locations around the world. And his son, Thomas, just a few years ago, just got back from his third tour in Iraq. And he had been injured and he had come home and recuperated and he was working underneath his father at their main headquarters in Atlanta. And everything was going well, business was thriving, except for one location, in Waterloo, Iowa. So Alan told his son, Thomas, I'm going to send you to oversee the Waterloo location. It seems to be faltering on its production. And I just want to make sure everything's okay. and Everything's all right over there. So I'm going to send you to Waterloo. He said, okay, no problem. So he told his wife and his kids, he's going to be in Waterloo for a few months, but he'll be back. And he went over there and he got in his old 1995 Ford Escort and he drove the entire way to Waterloo, Iowa. And when he got there, a lot of people knew about Alan but didn't know too much about his son. And so he got there and he introduced himself at the company and they looked at him and then he looked at his car. They looked at him again and they looked at his car. And he said, you're Alan's son, right? Said, so why are you driving that? Meaning that Alan being a multi-billionaire and of course, Thomas was going to be his direct heir, being his only child and only son. He's still driving around in a 1995 Ford Escort more well into the 2000s and don't understand why he's still driving that car. Said, well, it just fits me. And so he met with everybody there. He met with the, the, the plant manager and all, all the employees there one by one individually. And he got the layout of what was going on. And he also looked at the building and the building looked like it was still stuck in the 40s. It had been updated and upgraded in, in not too many years. And that's the first thing he did. He started doing upgrades and renovations on on the building. He got rid of the asbestos in there. He got, he got uh, better equipment. He got more up-to-date equipment. He fixed the air conditioning, the heating ducts. He did everything, made it all top-notch. Everything, he did everything he could. Not only that, but he made sure that he started funds for all the employees' children that they would have money to go to school or to do a trade or whatever they had to do after they graduated high school. He started individual funds for all the employees' children. And and not only that, he had monthly uh, gatherings with all employees and just to make a better environment for the work community that was there. Although he did all that great thing, all those great things for the company and for the surrounding communities, there were still some people who were just like, he's only doing that to bother up to his father. Because he knows his father's old, that he, he he wants to inherit the whole thing. So he's just doing all this to impress his father. Then he's just going back, going back to the way it was. I've seen it done before with other businesses here. Some hot shot comes in here and pretends to like everybody, get everything fixed up. And then he just walks away and we never see him again. But in fact, that didn't happen. In fact, three months later, he sent for his wife and his children to come live in Waterloo. They were hesitant because they loved their life in Atlanta, but nevertheless, they, they moved and all their family were residing in Waterloo with Thomas. 
And years and years went on and he kept doing things to not only improve the business, not only improve the, the building, but to improve the lives of the people who work there and the school district there and the community there and the community surrounding it. He helped build a new auditorium for the high school. He built, built helped upgrade and build parks for the children to make them safer to play in. He started outreach programs to the local prisons that were there. He did all kinds of things, not just talking, but just but doing things to help improve the community. But yet and still, you had those people who were just, just nobody can do all that good. Where's the other shoe going to drop? You know, you know those type of people who say, I believe it when I continue to see it, but even though they see it, they still think the other shoe's going to drop. You just expect the negative. You know those type of people. Well, one morning, it was about 2.30 in the morning, Thomas got a call from the plant manager. He said something happened in our in our boiler room and it caught the building B on fire. And he quickly jumped up and helped evacuate all the people out of building B. But by the time he got there, not only was building B on fire, building A and C were on fire for the plant that was going on there. So he, he helped get everybody out, make sure everybody was safe. He even called Salvation Army, he even had uh, other people come in and help make sure that everybody was okay and everybody was okay and all right. And word got out and there were still two employees trapped in the basement of building B. And he, he, he ran without hesitancy, his his uh, military instincts kicked in and he ran back in and said, where are you going? I said, I'm going to get him. I said, shouldn't you wait for the other fire department to get here and help you? He said, there's no time. There's probably smoke inhalation, they're probably passed out. We gotta get him out. We got to get him out. And he just ran and lo and behold, they were passed out and they were, they were working and they did try to get out, but they, they passed out and couldn't make it. They were stuck in the hallway. The hallway was filled with smoke and there was fire at the other end and it was coming towards their direction. He quickly scooped them both up and went by that time, the fire department for some of the fire departments were working on the fire building C got there to be and he handed one to him and went back to go get the other. And another fireman showed up and he grabbed that other person and he said, are you, he said, come on, Thomas, let's go. So I'm going to make sure that nobody else is in here. I'm going to make sure nobody else is in here. So the firefighter carried the last person out. They gave him some oxygen, gave him some water, make sure they're doing all right. And then an explosion happened in building B. And nobody saw Thomas get out. And so after all the fires were out and after hours and hours of sifting through the debris, they finally found his charred body on the looking into one of the rooms in which nobody else is in nobody else was in the building but he had to make sure nobody else is in there he didn't make it out and at the funeral service his father was there his mother was there his wife and his children were there and it seemed like the whole community was there and then questions started worrying scoring about from the naysayers and people was like, why, well, why was he stupid enough to go into the fire department told him to get out? Well, I know why he did it. He was still buttering up to his father. He wanted to show his father that he was capable of doing all this stuff. He was just capable of taking over this company. And, and other people say, well, he was just showing off to try to get to a political aspects because he wanted to run for governor one day of Iowa. And other people were saying he was just a, he was just a of, of egotistical guy. He didn't want to take the word of the fire department. He just wanted to do it. He wanted to be superhero. He wanted to be the hero of Waterloo. He wanted to be the hero of Iowa. He wanted to do it all on his own. And all those rumors and all these hypotheses were swirling around of why he did it, why he did it, why didn't he come out when he did, why did he, why did he do it, why did he do it, why did he show up here in the first place? Waterloo was fine. The, the plant was I. I mean, it wasn't as bad as everybody thought it was. Sure, it's great now, but it was I. Right. We would have made it without him and all that kind of stuff. And then the funeral went on and his wife got up with tears in her eyes and she was speaking from her heart. And she said, I'm relatively new to this this town. And I thank you for all those of you who reached out to us and, and welcomed us up with open arms. But I had tears in my eyes because I couldn't help but hearing from the moment that my husband died up until this point, that whole week, Hearing all the rumors around town that my father, that, that, that my husband was just after his father's riches, that my, my husband was after some kind of higher goal as a governor or the mayor or whatever. I, he was after this, after that, that he was a show off, that he was a braggart, that he was an egotistical somebody, although he drove a, uh, an old car. He did it to try to hide the facade and make him think that everybody was something else. But I'm going to tell you why my, my husband ran back in that building because he just simply loves people. He didn't fix that building 
in that area just because he wanted to brag. He fixed it because he wanted the people who worked there to have a better life. He wanted their families to have a better life. He wanted this community to strive and be a better place for more people to come into. That's why he came and sent for us. He didn't want to go back to Atlanta. He wanted to become a part of this community because he loves people. He loves people. He was a sacrificer. He was a giver. And his heart was just that big. And I hope all of you realize that and understand that. And she sat down. And then a small applause started and then larger applause started. And then everybody was standing on her feet, on their feet, applauding the words that she said about her husband. Now, I told you that story, which is absolutely fiction. But the story that I wanted to I wanted to convey these things about the mystery that we sometimes don't know. We as humans just want to know why. And even if we get an answer, we still want to know why about that answer. We just want to know. Some people call it being curious. Some people just call it being nosy. But for some reason or another, we as humans just want to know why. Why this happened? Why did that happen? Why did this person come here? Why did that person leave? Why did that person not come back? Why did that person this? Why did that person that? Why this company this? Why this company that? We do that all the time. And it made me think about Jesus. When he came down to earth, didn't get the biggest welcome, didn't get the biggest response. He's the son of the most high God. And yet he was born in a manger around some animals. When he came to Jerusalem in his last week of life, people were worshiped him and praised him for what he did. But four days later, they were exchanging his life for a known murderer and thief and wanted him crucified. But he did it without saying a mumbling word. And people wonder why he did it. People still, some, some people to this day still think the disciples stole his body. He didn't raise from the dead. He, people he stole his body. Some people thought he was the heretic. He just wanted to take down the Sadducees and the Pharisees. Some people think he did this just to show off. Some people think he was just arrogant because he think he knew it all. But simply, he did all that. Knowing who he was, he came down and he did all that for us for one reason. And the only reason he did so was the same reason Thomas did all those things for all the people of Waterloo in that company. Simply because he loved us. He loved us that much. And he still loves us that much on today. So I want to encourage you on today. No matter what it looks like, we can always depend on Jesus to be there for us. Why? Because he loves us that much. He does not wish us to go through any unnecessary hurt or pain. In fact, he won't give us more than we can bear. Although it seems like we're going through a tough time and going through difficult struggles, we need to understand and realize that he's there for us through everything, through thick and through thin, through hell and high water, through everything, because he loves us. And the only reason he's by our side, the only reason he renews his grace and mercy towards us every day, the only reason he said, lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. The only reason he reminds us that his grace is sufficient for us. The only reason he reminds us that he is our shepherd and we don't have to want for anything. The only reason that he gives us the peace that surpasses all understanding to keep our hearts and minds through him is because he loves us that much. He simply loves us that much. Today's feature song is one of my favorite songs I use in the background. I use it on special occasions. And it's the it's a piece called O Magnum Mysterium. It's got it's got Latin text, but the version that I use in the background is the instrumental version. But this version was composed by composer Morton Lawrenson and the arrangement is by H. Robert Reynolds. And it's not the same one that I use in the background because I thought I found this live version and it's very interesting. This was performed by the Eastman Wind Ensemble from Rochester, New York, I believe. I believe they're from, I know they're from upstate New York. And they did this live at the Takemitsu Hall in Tokyo, Japan in June of 2004, I believe. It's a beautiful, beautiful piece. It's just, it's the mystery. Why did Jesus come down here? Why did he come down here in the way he did? Being the, the, the son of the most high God, he came down in the most meager of circumstances, the most humble way. Just like Thomas drove a Ford Escort. He was humble in who he was, but he knew who he was and he knew why he was there. He was there to change the lives of people for the better. And that's why Jesus came, that we might have life and have it more abundantly. So I encourage you on today, let Jesus be a part of your life. It will change for the better. It doesn't mean you won't go through things. It doesn't mean that you will go through some tough situations. But it does mean that Jesus will be with you every step of the way. Why? 
Or why would somebody who's the son of the most living, of the most high God, the true and living God, do that for us? Why would he come down for us? Why would he take all that pain, all that suffering? Because he loved us. And why would he stay by our side? Because he loves us. And that is the only reason why Jesus would do so. Because he loves us that much. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that you are to us. Not for what you've done, but just who you are. That's why we will worship you in spirit and in truth and thank you every day for your grace and mercy. We're not going to wait for something big to happen to thank you. We're going to thank you for just breathing. We're going to thank you for giving us life, health, and strength. We're going to thank you for always being with us, for always being there. We thank you for just loving us. Even though we've done some things that make, make us wonder why you still love us, you do so nonetheless. You see the worst in us, but something about you just sees the best in us, sees the purpose that's in us, and you love us that much. So we just thank you, and we appreciate you for your never-ending, never-ending love, your unchanging love, your unrelenting love. And we just thank you, and we don't take it for granted. In Jesus' name, amen. This is the part of our devotional in which we give our birthday and anniversary shout outs. Today, we have a few birthdays to, to celebrate. Happy birthday to Lewis Thomas. Happy birthday to Teresa Dawkins. And happy birthday to a very sweet friend of mine. She's just got a smile that will melt your heart. Happy birthday to Christy Whitehead. Christy, Lewis, and Teresa, I hope you all are blessed. May God continue to bless you with many more birthdays and enjoy your birthday on today. Now that's going to do it for today's edition of the Daily Pause, but quickly before we go, I do have a random trivia fact. The continent of Asia is not only the largest by size, it's the largest by population. In fact, 59.47% of the world's population lives in Asia. And most of that population comes from two countries, India and China, who combined have just over 3 billion people alone. Hope you enjoyed that random trivia fact. I hope you're blessed. I hope you're encouraged. And enjoy today's feature song, O Magnum Mysterium, a, an old, written in Latin. It's an old Gregorian responsatory chant composed by Morton Lordson and arranged by H. Robert Reynolds and performed by the Eastman University Wind Ensemble, live in jo Tokyo, Japan at the Takamitsu Hall in Tokyo, Japan. Continue to love each other, continue to be blessed, and remember, every day, there's always time to take a pause. And Lord willing, I will see you again on tomorrow. Enjoy today's feature song. It starts right now. May God be with you on today. And God, excuse me, and God bless. <laughs>